That's right. Can they come Over in for years and years and years? Can they come in for free? No, I think it's BYOM. Bring your own money. <laughs> <laughs> but it is an interesting phenomenon. People do come here, and a lot of people come and come. They return, they return, they return, they return. And we're going to be talking uh, fairly soon to some of the super fans of Disney World. And you people, I don't think, realize how much goes on to just make this all happen. And we're going to show you a day in the life of Disney. It takes a lot of muscle as well as magic. And we'll show you how it all comes together kind of behind the scenes. But meanwhile, you know, this is 28,000 acres, so we're all over the place. And over at Epcot Center, Bill Ritter is in Italy. Hi, Bill. Hey, Joan. You know, I thought I was coming to Epcot Center, but clearly I took a wrong turn somewhere because I could swear that I am in Italy. The music, the beautiful architecture, the smell of cappuccino in the morning, a little morning rain. It's really romantic. Hey, hey, hey. Mm. Now that's Italian, huh? You know, this looks a lot like Italy, but I have a little secret to tell you. I'm not in Italy, of course. I'm in Florida, Walt Disney World at Epcot Italian Showcase, where really the whole world is just a few steps away. Now, while it looks real, to many of us, we wondered what it looked like to real Europeans. So we asked some of them, and we're going to tell you what they said coming up a little later. But first, we're going to go to Spencer Christian, who I understand is out there braving it in the Wild West. Spence? Bill, we're kicking up our heels out here this morning outside the Diamond Horseshoe Saloon in Frontierland. This is Disney's tribute to the Old West. Now, city slickers can come here and take a look at an authentic review, and the show is just getting started. Now, I can't dance like these ladies, but I can, can give you the weather in just a minute. Charlie? All right, Spencer, good fun down here this morning, but we do not ignore the news of the morning. Happy 25th anniversary to Disney World. Good. Since 1931, air... To keep things running here in Mickey's Kingdom, it takes a lot of blood, sweat, and ears. But from the thousands of costumes to the millions of sodas, from parades by day to fireworks at night, Disney World rocks around the clock. For the public, the Magic Kingdom opens its gates at 8.30 in the morning. But for many of the folks who work here, they've already been on the clock for some time. During those early hours, cleanup crews get rid of yesterday's mess. Everyday Disney World generates some 469 tons of waste. Gardeners get an early start, tending 3 million flowering plants and 100,000 trees. And laundry? Try washing 32,000 uniforms and costumes a day. That's 100 tons of laundry. 7 a.m. Groceries arrive at one of the park's 82 eating places and cooks start preparing breakfast. Disney World's guests are a hungry bunch, every year consuming 5 million hot dogs, 7 million burgers, and with the tropical climate, 46 million Cokes. Well, as you can see, we have a lot of hungry people that come to Walt Disney World every day, and it's our job to exceed their expectations. While throngs of visitors go from one attraction to another, cast members rely on a network of tunnels below the Magic Kingdom to accomplish their needs. They report to work and pick up their costumes. Supplies are shuttled from location to location. It's here that the day-to-day -day business of Disney World goes on, far from the eyes of visitors enjoying that magical world above. 11 a.m., Epcot's World Showcase opens, Disney World's window on international culture. Epcot boasts 350 mechanical puppets called audio animatronics. To keep them healthy, electronic physicians are on call to perform emergency surgery for hydraulic leaks, electronic nervous tics, and sudden cases of audio laryngitis. Over at Disney MGM Studios, an army of carpenters and artists have created their own Hollywood, building sets for the park's stage productions, as well as TV shows and movies. The costume department boasts the largest working wardrobe in the world, dressing 34,000 cast members, including Disney World's most famous residents. You may not know this, but Mickey is, has 258 individual costumes for himself, and Minnie is coming up close now. She's at 202. Toward the end of the afternoon, as visitors start leaving the park, pyrotechnic specialists fine-tune the nightly fireworks display. Illumination 25 uses $7,500 worth of explosives every night, making Disney World one of the country's largest consumer of fireworks. Just another example of going all out to impress even the most hard-to-please visitor. How can we exceed our guests' expectations? How can we do it better and better and better? And each time they come here, how can we amaze them and really create the magic for them that they expect? By 
11 p.m., Disney World is empty. The cleanup crews arrive, and hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work they go. Another day begins. You think they all whistle while they work? Coming up, Epcot, the United Nations of Disney. Good you are looking at a live helicopter sh shot of Spaceship Earth, the well-known symbol of Epcot, Epcot here in, uh, at Walt Disney World. This was really Walt Disney's dream, Epcot, and the Magic Kingdom is here is like a Magic Kingdom for adults. You can travel to places you've never been before, some that don't even exist yet. This is a place without war, without poverty, and oh yeah. A planet that has jello pudding all over the place, you see. A taste of utopia? That's Epcot, as dreamed up by Walt Disney himself 30 years ago. It will never cease to be a living blueprint of the future. Epcot stands for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. Just another made-up Disney word that stuck. But this one comes with a vision, the bold merger of old-world charm and futuristic potential. You can interface with the future and party in the past at a place called World Showcase. It's a mile-long international tour de force, 11 countries in all. Passport, please. Designed for Americans who probably won't travel abroad. You can say hola to them when they say hola back. <laughs> and for foreign tourists who are homesick. You can see the world here in the Epcot. I thought it was cool that the Japanese had ice cream with red beans in it. Food plays a big diplomatic role at Epcot, says French chef Bruno Rignon. Like 140 people together, which don't know each other. And when you get inside the restaurant, it seems to be they know each other because they enjoy all the same food, same ambiance. Food for thought is served up at Innoventions sort of a non-stop World's Fair. Here you can save on gas while saving the planet by driving an electric car. Oh, oh thank heaven. Tour St. Peter's without the Pope's blessing at the virtual Vatican. Well, now I can say I've been there and done that. And through a high-tech trick. I assume that's some sort of Disney costume you have on. Well, it's typical. Even book yourself on a late-night talk show. When it comes to Epcot's utopian message, where people actually live a life they can't find anywhere else in the world. It's the grown-ups who are all ears. Epcot was designed never to be completed, always to be evolving, and to this day, it still is. Still ahead, a Disney World survival guide, how to beat the crowds and save some bucks when Good Morning America continues. Good Morning America, live from Disney World. Once again, Bill Ritter. Welcome back. We are at Epcot. You know, millions of people come here every year. Millions more return all the time. Year after year, they even have a name for them here. They're called super fans. Now, the park is it's a little early for the park to be open, but we've invited some of these super fans here so we can talk to them, and I'm going to introduce them to you. First one is Mile Baldwin. Now, Mile, you're from Amston, Connecticut. That's correct. I, I understand you are 61 years old, but you have done a feat that few people, I'm sure, have, have done before. What did you do from Amston, Connecticut? I, I rode my bike from uh, Hamden, Connecticut to... Walt Disney World. Here, how long, how long did that take you? That took 30 days. And now you must be in pretty good shape to do that. Well, I had had open heart surgery uh, three years before, yeah. so it was a good test for that. Good job. Very successful. I understand. The little elves tell me something. <laughs> You're going to make another trip soon. Yes, well, next year we're planning a trip from Walt Disney World uh, out to Disneyland. By bicycle. By bicycle. Good luck. We'll probably check in with you on the road with some live remotes, okay? okay. Thank, Thank you, Miles. You. I'm going to ask you to just step over here. I'm going to talk next to Mr. Tyson Irvin. You are Hello. 17 years old. Right, You're 17. from Scottsdale, Arizona. Yes, Scottsdale, Arizona. And we're going to get some umbrellas. If yes. someone get me an umbrella, because it's starting to rain here at Pop Disney World. This up a little bit. Very good. Thank you very much. Tyson, how many times have you been to Disney World? I've been here. This is my 35th trip to Walt Disney World. 35 times. Now, what can you see that's different? I love your umbrella, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's kind of dilapidated a little bit. What can you see that's different after 35 times here? Well, you find new things all the time. I mean, the detail here is incredible. And whenever you're here, I see things that people have done back in 71 that I see new when I come back here. Everything's new every time. Well, but another detail is right to your right. So I'm going to scoot ahead of you here. These are the newlyweds, Eddie and Therese Taylor from London, England. Just wed. This is your honeymoon? That's right, yeah. Uh, we're not intruding, are we? Uh, not at all. Not at all. Okay. Now, why would you come here for your honeymoon? Because it's a special place. You know, you want your honeymoon to be special. People make you feel 
happy, you feel friendly it's when you come here. It's all about happy endings, and Disney is about happy endings. Well, so and you have a happy beginning, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you're from Europe. Tell me, is this real to you? Is it they've done a pretty good job? Yeah, they have. In condensing the highlights of, of European cities, I mean, certainly with, with England, they have. Great. Okay, well, thank you all for joining us, super fans, and welcome back to Disney World, and congratulations on your wedding. Okay, a little later on, how Disney turns all this fun into a very serious business, big business. I'll take you behind the scenes when Good Morning America continues from Walt Disney. That's because we have adjusted our cameras to make this look like an old-time movie set. Joan and I have come over from the Magic Kingdom to the Disney MGM Studios, and this place is so big. So that we're it... following the rain. Can you believe it? It rained earlier. It, then the sun came out. It got beautiful. The rain moved over here, and, of course, we followed it. This is real rain, but everything over here looks like a movie set. Yeah, but just stop and look at a minute, because, I mean, they captured the essence of Hollywood here. This is like the old corner drugstore where the would-be stars were discovered, all those great stories. And here she then sits there in the were rain. the never-to-be-discovered stars. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, madam, no, no, no. It's so nice of you to come out in the rain and to join us today. But really... Fine with me, and I'll make you both stars. Yeah, right, I have an agent like that already. She should be, you should be oh, yes. uh, working with him. Yeah, meet this guy right here. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a place really where everything does look like a movie set. And, you know, the, the legends just live on here. And they're all, look, everywhere you go here, they're always rehearsing. It's great. But we'll show you the behind the scenes of Disney MGM Studios. And also, you, we will take you on an elevator ride that'll make you wish you took the stairs. And a little bit later, uh, Peabo Bryson will be here and Regina Troop to sing, I think, one of the most famous uh, Disney songs of recent years that from Aladdin. So we take a break. Our second hour coming up. Hope you can stay with us as we celebrate the 25th anniversary of Walt Disney World here on Good Morning America. Five year plus cast members of Walt Disney World Resort. Good morning. October 1st, and we are here to celebrate the first day of the Walt Disney World 25th anniversary celebration. It is extraordinary. 25 years ago to the day this place opened, there was yeah. one theme park, there were two hotels. Yeah. Two now, hotels. Yep. Yeah, now three theme parks, uh, Waterland, there are 25 resorts. Do you know how many people this place employs? How many? 40,000 people. It's incredible. And you should know that this is more than a theme park, the Disney MGM part, because it's also a real working motion picture, animation, and television studio. And here, the visitors can go and they can see Disney animated classics of the future while they're still on the drawing board. But you do get a sense of the past in Hollywood. There's a lot of uh, actors yeah. around here. The Never Wers, the Wannabes. A lot of actors. The dried up damsels feasting on dreams of celluloid lore. Oh, I, I could like go that. On. But don't. <laughs> anyway, well, there's a lot of us that are on the move. Um, Michael Gillen, he took what is known as the scariest ride here in Disney, and he's going to show you the technology behind the terror. And also, uh, Spencer Christian, he's gone from Frontierland. I think he's now over in Germany. Spencer? Guten Tag, German Charlie. Yes, I'm at Epcot's German Showcase. And just in time for Oktoberfest. And yes, there is a beer garden here. We'll show you around in just a minute. But first, let's go to Bill Witter, who's in Epcot's Italian Showcase. Bill? God, there's a... Music, sailing music, with a boat in the background, dockside here at Lake Epcot. We're here. Look at that rainbow. Is that unbelievable? A little rain, but comes a rainbow. It's a happy place to be. And did you ever wonder what it would like be like to actually work here at Walt Disney World? You know, the workers aren't even called workers. They're called cast members, and they're always so happy, or so it seems. Well, how does Disney do it? I'm going to show you, take you behind the scenes, and show you how it's done. How does Joel Siegel do it? He's about three miles away at the MGM Studios. Joel? Thanks, Bill. This is a primetime cafe, celebrates the 50s and celebrates television. Great years for television, the 50s great years for Disney animators. They turned out true classics like Cinderella and Lady and the Tramp. Hard to believe Disney almost quit animation. Joel, I can't believe you have your elbows on the table. I'll have the uh, whole story later on, Charlie. 
All right, thank you, Joel. As Joan mentioned a few moments ago, the biggest thrill ride here at the Disney MGM Studios, and I mean literally the biggest, is the Hollywood Tower. It is the Tower of Terror, is that what they call it? <laughs> That's our, right. Our science editor, Michael Gillen, uh, who basically covers science for us, but as I think many people know, is a ride freak. Oh, yeah. Found uh, out how this thing works. And, and I, I like them scary, Charlie. You know, the story goes that this hotel dates back to the 1930s, and you can look, it's pretty decrepit looking, but if you go behind the scenes like I did, I tell you, the technology that makes this work is strictly space age. Welcome Thank you. to the Hollywood Tower Hotel. Stepping into these elevators is like stepping into the Twilight Zone. But don't worry. Behind the scenes, Disney Imagineer Rod Kurihara says everything's under control. It takes over 100 computers to control this ride. 100? Yeah, in fact, that's even more processing power than they have on the space shuttle. Like NASA, if one computer goes bad, there are backups for safety. And at Mission Control, technicians keep an eye on the ride, especially those crucial elevator motors. Michael, this motor is over 200 times more powerful than an ordinary elevator motor. Yeah, I can feel the whole building shaking, Rod. The elevator motors are at the top of the tower. There's a steel cable wrapped around a huge computer-controlled drum. If the drum spins one way, it pulls the elevator up, leaving your stomach behind. If it spins the other way, it pulls the car down. 13 stories in just over a second, faster than a free fall. <laughs> you know, they tested this thing for six months for safety because it's so complicated. They wanted to make sure it was safe. They hold it to a safety standard, Charlie, that is 100 times more strict than the airline industry. So it's terrifying, but it's safe. You've ridden this. I have not ridden this one. About 10 times you've I've ridden, ridden it. it. Yeah, you've got to do it. You've got to do it. <laughs> I told you it was a ride freak. We're not ignoring the news. Elizabeth Vargas is back in New York at the news desk. Elizabeth, good morning. Good morning, Charlie. We do have... The attention to detail in this place is really astounding. I mean, they have created Hollywood in its early days. Now, of course, I have a personal favorite part. Check it out. Always wanted my name in lights. How cool is that? Anyway, from the marquees to the actors to the vintage cars to the street lights, it really is the attention to detail that all the visitors who come here really, really enjoy, as our Bill Ritter found out. And Bill right now is over at Epcot. Good morning again, Joan. You know, about 25 million people come to Walt Disney World every year. Many of them return time and time again. And as I found out, it is not by accident. This is part of a well-planned Disney business strategy. They call it a magical place, but there's nothing magical or accidental about the $3 billion a year success of the Disney World theme park. Everything here, it seems, is by design from the look of the costumes to how people wait in line, from the constant presence of Disney's animated film characters to the strategic location of the gift stores. Thank you. And yes, even to what people are called. They're not workers, they're cast members and usually smiling. And these aren't customers, they're guests who spend a lot of money. The business strategy is simple. Try to convince customers they'd like to be guests again. Linda Warren is Senior Vice President of Marketing, who started here 23 years ago as a ride operator. Everything is planned. We want people to come in and be transformed and leave their, all their cares at the door. And so we just want to transform them as soon as they come in. Congratulations and welcome to your first day here and to tradition. My so that everyone who works here gets that message, all employees go through a kind of boot camp. We are a fun company. We're an entertainment company. It's and called Disney like University, and you're getting a rare look at the classes that introduce workers to the Disney way of doing business, including the so-called Disney look, strict rules about what workers can wear and look like, top to bottom, from jewelry to hats, shoes to sunglasses, and especially hair on men. These are acceptable styles. These are not. And if a guy's hair is deemed unacceptable, he can march to Disney's underground barber shop called Kingdom Cutters. And is my hair acceptable or unacceptable? It, it's close. It's close. quite full, so we would have to taper it in a little bit closer to look more of the Disney standard. Uh, you know, I just got a haircut like three days ago. We still have to bring you down to Disney look. Oh, I, I like my hair like this. 
These guidelines may seem extreme, but Disney executives say if they didn't insist on them, the product would suffer. Disney University director Jane Parker. If it naturally happened, I think anywhere you or I went, any business we, we went to, any place we ever went to to be served, we would get excellent service. People would realize we're there because we want to be served and we want to have a great experience. And that doesn't happen to you and me every place we go. Wall Street seems to agree. Entertainment analyst Chris Dixon. Well, the issue is to maintain quality control, to maintain an image, to reinforce that Disney brand. And at the same time, uh, to give people a reason to come back. There's a comfort level in knowing that you've been there before, and there's a comfort level in knowing what you're, you're willing to expect. And take a look at the ultimate in Disney planning, an entire town called Celebration, designed by Disney, its vision of the perfect American city. It's a self-contained, privately run, and completely planned community for about 20,000 people, just minutes from the theme park. Of course, not everything Disney creates works. Its planned historical theme park in Virginia was virtually run out of town by local residents. And while things are now running smoothly at Euro Disney outside Paris, the French were far from hospitable when the park opened a few years ago. Disney says it has learned from these experiences and moved on. And in Florida, the magic goes on okay, by design. Let's go there. Beautiful rainbow for the 25th anniversary, and for Disney, a pot of gold at the end of that rainbow. Analysts say tourists will spend here in 1996 about $3 billion. Joan? All right. Looking to save time, money, and avoid crowds on your visit to Disney World? Well, we have a guest who will tell you just how to do that. She is Alexandra Mays Birnbaum, the consulting editor of Birnbaum's Travel Guides, including the official guide to Walt Disney World. It's good to have you with us this Thank morning. Thank you. Everybody wants to know how to save money, so why don't we start with some money-saving tips? Well, saving money means planning ahead. That means uh, checking out the possibility of buying a package so that the components will cost much less if you buy it as one complete group. Realizing that uh, down here you have a choice of 18 resorts, and they, in terms of prices, they start at $69 at the All-Star Sports or All-Star uh, Music. That's $17.25 mm -hmm. if you've got four people in the room. Go to full service, uh, the, excuse me, self-service restaurants instead of the full service oh, restaurants. Yeah, sure, You'll save sure. money. If you want to splurge and go to the fancier restaurants, go to them at lunchtime where the entrees often cost less. How about saving time, Alex? The place is so huge and there's so much to see. You've got to plan ahead, Spencer. I mean, the idea is to know the layouts of the parks before you get here. And if you don't know them, then pick up one of the maps as you enter the uh, gates. Check out where things are so that you don't spend all of your time figuring out which attractions you want to go to. When you go to the attractions, if there's more than one line, take a look at the line on your left. It almost always is shorter. Well, why because is that? People instinctively go to their right, so the one on the left is going to be shorter. V very quickly, people tend to think of Disney World as a place for families, but what about uh, attractions for couples or singles, couples without kids and singles? Well, see, this is a, where we are right now is a great place, because here at the Beer Garden over at the uh, Germany uh, Pavilion, if you're in groups of singles or, or just small groups, they seat you together, so it's a good way to meet people. Go over to the Disney Institute for a day. Take courses. Great way to meet people. Or if you're couples, it's wonderful for adults. Also, there's a lot of romance here. You can have candlelight That's dinners sure. for yeah. two over at Victoria and Albert's, over at the Grand it's a Floridian. Wonderful place, yeah. Absolutely. And there also are places where you can have glasses of wine. And if you are traveling as a family, some quick safety tips? Safety tips. If you've got young kids, a good idea is to pick up a special uh, name tag. Fill out your child's name so that if your child gets separated from you, it's very easy for one of the staff members to pick the child out. Also, each of the parks has places at guest relations where they keep children's lost log books. That's important. So that you really can check them out. And if all else goes, plan to meet at a particular time during the day where you're all going to get together just in case you've been separated. Okay, great tips. Alexander Mays Birnbaum, thank you very much. And when Good Morning America continues, we've got some music for you. Peebo Bryson and Regina Troop will perform one of Disney's most popular songs, A Whole New World. It's everywhere around Walt Disney World, and we thought we'd give you a little visual tour. That, of course, is Main Street, looking back toward Cinderella's Castle that is now all gussied up as a birthday cake with 26 candles on, 25 for the years that they have existed and one to grow on. And there is a shot of the area called Rivers of America, where normally the paddle boats are moving around in the water. I'm sure many people have taken that ride when they have visited here. That's in the Magic Kingdom theme park. And now we've gone over to the Epcot Center, the second of the theme parks here. 
And that is a shot from the World Showcase, the national pavilions that surround the lake over towards Spaceship Earth, which is really the signature building in the middle of Epcot. And that is a helicopter shot of same pulling back. We've had a little bit of rain here this morning, but it's clearing now. And this is the third theme park, the Disney MGM Studios. That's a Hollywood Tower, the Tower of Terror that Michael Gillen gave you a tour of a little bit earlier in the program, showed you how it works, and you see the beginnings of the crowds that are beginning to come into the park that open at eight, opens at 8.30 in the morning. Little visual tour there. That takes you around a lot faster than the monorail will move you around, and we visited there all three of the theme parks here at Disney World. In this half hour, we're going to be talking to Michael Eisner, who is Chief Executive Officer of the Walt Disney Company. We're also going to tell you an interesting story about how the Disney Company almost abandoned what is its bread and butter. Uh, it is known for the animated movies, obviously. And a few years ago, Disney almost got out of the animated movie business. Joel Siegel will tell you what happened in just a few moments. Also a song from Peebo Bryson and Regina Troop, one of the signature Disney, so Disney songs, this one uh, from Aladdin. But first, we time when the Disney people almost abandoned their involvement in animated pictures. Joel Siegel is over at the Disney MGM Studios to tell you what happened. Joel? Charlie, if you grew up in the 50s, and I know you did, this looks just like home. And if you grew up in the 50s, you grew up with Disney animated characters. But yes, there was a time when Disney came this close to quitting animation. And it wasn't that long ago. Magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest one of all? Say, Bird. Bird. More than great animated films, these films have to be considered on any serious list of the greatest films ever made. And as long as Walt Disney was hands-on involved, or pen and pencils on, magic happened. In the 50s, he was busy planning Disneyland. Sleeping Beauty was the first major animated feature to be made without Walt's touch, and humor, and humanity and it shows. And he knew it, so he was hands-on again, head over heels in the Jungle Book. And it shows. Disney died in 1966. This would be his last animated feature. Just the bare necessities of life. These animated features are more than just films. For three generations, they've been the first films we've seen, with characters, memories, even feelings we carry with us the rest of our lives. Then in the 70s and into the 80s, Disney animation went off track. As a critic and a fan and a kid whose favorite movie was Pinocchio, one of the hardest things I've had to do. A great American art firm was dying, and I was one of the crowd who'd gathered to sign the death certificate. I don't want to do it. I don't want to give a Walt Disney cartoon a bad review. With a black cauldron, the fabled Disney animators seemed all burnt out. The studio actually considered leaving motion pictures entirely. Certainly no cost was spared as far as just the, the visual look of the picture and the special effects and all of that. But to me, what was hurting was the heart and the real soul of the, of the stories and the characters. But one year later, Mark Ken was drawing a character called Ariel. A new regime had taken over. We attribute this quite frequently to Roy Disney, who is... This is Roy Jr. Roy Jr., right. And Roy talks about the three things you need in order to make a great Disney animated feature, and they are story, story, and story. It was going back to what made a great Disney feature. It was going back and finding it. And Mark Hinn would animate Belle, Pocahontas, and young Simba. The Lion King is the top-selling video cassette of all time. According to Video Business Magazine, all five top-selling videos are of Disney animated features. Barely 10 years after the studio came close to closing its Burbank Studios, a new animation facility at Disney World is producing its own animated feature. The renaissance in animation means new characters for the theme parks. The magic is back for another generation, at least. This amazing run of features, six and seven years, from Mermaid to the Hunchback of Notre Dame, unsurpassed even by Walt Disney himself. And for the first time, other major studios, 20th Century Fox, Paramount, DreamWorks, Warner Brothers, have animated features either in production or ready to be released. The reasons for the renaissance really are story, story, and story. Of course, a little genius never heard either. Charlie? All right, thank you, Joel. This park, Walt Disney World, looks much the same as it did when it opened. 25 years ago, or at least parts of it do, but my goodness how Joel has changed since 1985. That clip looked much different. When we come back, 
The chairman and chief executive officer of the Walt Disney Company, Michael Eisner, have a chance to talk with him when Good Morning America continues. Stay with us. Watching the little white ball fly high above the dunes of St. Andrews, we're transported back on board the QE2 to Dr. Buzz Aldrin's lecture on the feeling of weightlessness, Cunard's Queen Elizabeth II. Cunard, where else in the world? Standing on the ship's bow, you listen to the wind wisping off the Brickstar Glacier. Or is it the echo of Patti LuPone's unforgettable... This is Donnie, is the chairman and chief executive officer of the Walt Disney Company, Michael Eisner. Good morning. You're going to be here to meet all of them when they show up, right? It's actually easier to have six, six year olds than it is to. Uh, no, it's, it's easier, easier to have a hundred. Right. 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 You run this place. Do you have to stand in line when you get on the rides? I don't have to, but I do often. Do you really? We like to see what it's like uh, when it's hot and humid and people are tired. Uh, my children let me know when the lines are too long, and <laughs> I hear about it. And the other thing that's so frustrating do the characters talk to you? I when they're never get... in character? Never. Yeah. Never. Never. Not even to you. I have been in a limousine with Mickey Mouse uh, going to the White House when we were driving around the block about three times that I kept saying, uh, I know you're in there. Uh, are you a man or a woman? Is it hot in there? Say hello to me. Right. Nothing. I said, look, I'm the chairman of the board. I can change the rules. Speak to me. Still won't do it. Zippo. Nothing. <laughs> That's funny. It, 25 years ago, actually more than that, when they first started buying land and Walt Disney had this image of of building this uh, this theme park because he was so landlocked in California, didn't have enough land, couldn't have afforded it. People said it won't work. Central Florida, you're not near the beaches, it's swamp land, can't happen. Why do you think it did? Why do you think it worked so well? I think his attention uh, to detail, even though he didn't live to see it open, he had left a culture and a philosophy uh, for excellence, for guest service, uh, for fun, for, you know, he knew he wasn't curing cancer, we were just gonna have a good time. and. Uh, his landscaping concepts, and it just, uh, it just has done really well. It is a phenomenon. I was saying earlier, I, I, I suspect it probably is the most uh, phenomenal man-made vacation resort that's ever existed. Um, and it has provided a lot of jobs for this area. It has certainly meant a boom time for this area around here. Why are other areas, do you think, so wary when the Disney people say we may come in? I'm thinking, obviously, of the park in, in Virginia that you had proposed a couple of years ago. Well, almost everywhere we go, people are not wary. I mean, if I go visit my in-laws in Jamestown, New York, the next thing I see is a headline is Disney's coming to Western New York State. I think everybody really wanted us but the Washington Post. We, uh, <laughs> we, we, we ran across a big barrier, and it said uh, hunt country, and uh, people were a little nervous that maybe we would trivial, trivialize history. But we are going to uh, develop the things that we had for Disney's America in Disney's California adventure, at least how it relates to the West in California, where they're a little more used to us. Why we were a little, we were a little uh, uh, Disney-esque for the Beltway, I think. Tell me about. Everybody talks about the positive parts of this. Tell me what's wrong with Disney World. Is it too expensive? Well, I don't think much is wrong with Disney World. No, it's not too expensive. What you get here for what you pay, uh, the, the amount of time, the amount of attractions, the amount of things that you don't pay for once you pay your initial ticket is much less than even a movie ticket where you go for two hours. Uh, what's wrong on occasion is it's too hot. Uh, it's often very crowded. Um, the, uh, uh, the biggest thing that's wrong is you have to leave. Uh, as, a fa as, a, as a parent, sometimes it's a little tiring after your four-year-old has had a long day uh, and he's cranky. That, that could be hard. Walt Disney envisioned this place as some place that would never be finished, that there would always be room to grow. Is there an economy of scale here? Can it get too big? Well, I've been here about half the 25 years, yes. and I think we've more than doubled it. We've, uh, I don't know, put three or four billion dollars in the ground. We've opened up maybe 19 hotels, uh, uh, two theme parks, two water parks, a uh, celebration of Newtown. I think you've talked about a little bit the Disney Institute, mm -hmm. which was inspired by Chautauqua in, in western New York State. Uh, no, I, I don't think it can get too big. It can get too sloppy. It can get uh, a too... Uh, badly done, it can get the cast members can get too surly, none of which happens, but I don't think it's too big. I mean, uh, we have a, a land size that gives us a palette on which to draw that is, uh, is wonderful. We don't have to worry, for the first time in my life, we don't have to worry about, can we get that piece of land, and is there going to be a building right in front mm -hmm. of it in three years? Your favorite ride when you're down here? 
Oh, geez. I think the last one we do always... Uh, the newest one. The newest. It's like your last child. Yeah. That birth is always nice. Sure. Michael Eisner, good to be here. Nice to talk to you. Thanks Thank for being with down. us. We take a commercial break. When we come back, Peebo Bryson and Regina Troop with a song that I think you'll recognize. Good Morning America continues. I can show you the world Shining, shimmering splendor Tell me, princess, knowing did you let Let your heart decide I can open your eyes Take you wonder by wonder Over sideways and under On a magic carpet ride America is brought to you by Oil of Olay. Well, the game's all here now. We got the big boss, Michael Eisner. Thank you so much for letting us come oh, down no, here. It's, it's, and with, all, with all due respect, we got the big boss over here. Oh, excuse thank me. I'm sorry. Much. I'm sorry. Thank this is him. the board of directors here, the whole gang. Mr. Mouse, Mr. Duck, thank you ever so much. Bebo, Regina, thank you. We'll be back in New York tomorrow. We had a terrific time. Hope you did as well. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow from New York. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.